Hello everybody, so here's a small documentary on the Portland protests regarding George Floyd and Breonna Taylor's deaths, the Black Lives Matter movement, and criminal justice reform. So I'm going to give you guys contextual commentary while showing you guys the different video clips that are going on. Pretty much what I'm going to be focusing on are the peaceful daytime protests and the violent nighttime protests, so viewer discretion advised with the violent nighttime protests as well. In addition, I apologize if there's any sort of video or audio complications. My camera actually got attacked by a dog in the process of me filming all of this. So anyway, here we go. So this was on Friday, May 29th, 2020. Now the energy of this moment is difficult to describe because on the one hand, no one wants to engage in violence, yet everyone here was prepared for any worst case scenario. IBEA stands for Ideas Big. It's a Portland group created by college students meant to create and expand innovative ideas. So I suppose in this case, it's for justice reform, though I don't think graffitiing your name as legitimacy, assuming it was them, which it may not have been them to graffiti. Now the question I had in this moment was, why was traffic stopped? Well, interestingly enough, it's because people were positioning their cars like this to make it safer for us. I have to respect these people considering the fact that this was on a curved road on an interstate, so if there was a crash, they'd be dead. This really shows the dedication towards the cause. thousands of people. This was only a small fraction of the amount of people that had shown up. We got a bunch of donations from people in the Bay Area and Portland. We are here to have earplugs, water, face masks, keep everybody safe, hand sanitizer, COVID is a thing. That is why we're here. Now, earplugs were being given because police were reportedly planning on using military sonic sound weapons meant for naval battles with pirates, as an example. Sir, you individually, who do you have to call? Who do you have to write? A huge aspect of these protests were circulated around Breonna Taylor, the girl who was killed in her bed after police broke into her home unannounced. At this moment, I realized that there were no police around as well, and so what I didn't realize is that the police in this moment were far away preparing for the night. Okay, okay. Black men? Black men? Are you showing up for your black women? Be clear about that. This night is about women. So, when we are asked to support our black women, we need to, to let them know. I don't want to have to get back on this mic, but y'all are being real quiet. There is not enough support here, and that shows throughout our community. There is a divide. That divide was not caused by us, but that divide is carried out by us. So I need all my black men to show up and show that we are supporting black women. So let me hear you. Are we supporting black women? My black men, are we supporting black women? Make sure you remember that. All throughout this protest, when you go home, when you call your mom, when you call your grandma, remember who the backbone to our community is. Don't forget it. They need our support. We cannot let them In addition to Black Lives Matter, the speeches here were also focused on other oppressed groups as well. In this case, as you will see, Native Americans. I grew up here in Portland. I grew up in North and Northeast Portland. I grew up in the black community. And I am proud to stand here in solidarity tonight. Also the tribal relations director for the city of Portland so I am here representing that tribal relations program here at this movement in solidarity tonight where's our native people Should we all be upset about 
about discrimination? Yes. Should I have to continue talking about this? Yes. So we can't get tired, can we? No. So we're not going to. How are you feeling about the protest and the energy right now? I'm loving it. I you know, and even when I wasn't here, I've been watching it on TV for two days solid. And I, these young people got it, they got it going on. They are organized and they are making the old folks move. <laughs> now, to conclude this little portion of the day protest, there is going to be a lady talking about her 22 year old friend who attended a protest in Portland. She was standing next to a group of kids. She went down Sunday night and was standing next to children, and they got tear gassed. And that's just appalling. They were doing nothing wrong. We're just here asking for people to be alive. And so I just brought what I could so I could come and help because it's not fucking fair. So, you know, but the thing that's so beautiful about all of this is how well everyone is taking care of each other here. You know, people are giving water and food and snacks and sanitizer and masks. And God, I just gave my goggles to a woman I've never met before just to keep everybody safe because this shit's got to stop. We all deserve to be alive and we all deserve to be safe here. And that's what we're doing out here tonight. Overall, the day protests have been happening every day and are not receiving the same attention as their violent counterparts at night. Like it or hate it, the truth is that less people tune into the videos on peaceful protests. And, well, that sucks. But that's the truth. Despite this, I did want to add the nonviolent action into this type of a video in order to do the justice on the whole movement at large.